When historians talk about historical silences, they or we are um, usually talking about parts of the past that are not well explained or are not often talked about. And that changes all the time. So there used to be a time when um, lots of people, lots of historians wrote books about slavery, um, but all the books were about men. And so at that time, it was a historical silence that none of the books were about women. We know they were there, but somehow no one wrote about them. So that's a historical silence. And there are lots and lots of historical silences. And part of our job as historians is to just try to keep uncovering those silences and try, try to keep filling those gaps. Um, those silences happen, I think, for two main reasons. One is because as historians, we are people who live in the present day. And so we have our own... Um, kind of preoccupations and concerns and also biases that are shaped by living in this moment. So um, when I am looking into the archive and trying to write a book and trying to you know uncover a historical silence, I really care about the stuff I care about, but I not might not care about the stuff that someone else cares about because I'm in my own brain. And so there I'm probably reproducing silences even that someone else might be able to say, oh, Professor Owens, is creating a silence even as she's uncovering something. So that's part of what happens is that our own biases can shape the historical work that we do. And so, um, and so part of our job is to uncover it. The other thing that shapes historical silences is sources. So um, when historians go out to write our books and, and uncover historical silences, our main job is to go into the past and to look for evidence. And so of course we can't time travel, we don't have, you know, we don't have time travel tools, but instead we go to libraries and we go to archives and we talk to people and we go to landscapes and we look at you know monuments and look at all kinds of stuff to try to reconstruct the past. But not everything has stuff that got left over. So sometimes stuff burns up in fires, sometimes stuff, you know, floats away in floods, and then the stuff is gone and you have nothing that you can work with to tell the story. But the other thing that's really important is that a lot of the stuff that we use as historians to um, tell our stories are written materials. So diaries are really important. You know, you and I might write down what we did every day in our own diary now. And in 100 years, someone's going to find that diary and say, oh, I know what someone was doing in 2017. And that's what we do as historians. But particularly when you think about the history of slavery, there are lots of people who didn't know how to write. In fact, most enslaved people didn't know how to write and didn't have an opportunity to write and were not allowed, allowed to write and, so, and were not allowed to read. And so it becomes a little bit more challenging to figure out what they were doing every day because they couldn't write it down and they didn't write it down. And so we don't have paperwork to look at. So in general, historical silences can be filled. But um, when there are kind of archival holes, when there are no papers for us to look at, we have to get creative about what kind of sources we might try to use. Um, to, to fill those gaps. And we, that's what we do. Um, but that can be a cause of historical silences also.